Hey guys, a lot of you have been asking for a LEGO Tips and Tricks video lately, so on Instagram I asked if you'd rather see specific or general tips, and you guys voted for specific. So I did my research and looked through a lot of other tutorial videos like this to see if anything hasn't really been covered yet, and to my surprise I didn't find many videos covering Freeform, or specifically how to build in Freeform. So that's what I'll be showing you here today in this first episode of Brick Tips. If you guys have anything else you want me to cover, then make sure to let me know in a comment below. Without further ado, let's dive right in. So what is freeform? Freeform is when the base of your Lego mock is not a square or a circle or a rectangle or has some defined shape. It's when the base is an organic blob that looks like it's been torn out of the ground from a larger environment. So this is a really cool technique for giving your build a lot of detail and a lot of depth, and I've tried to work it into my mocks more and more recently. Anyways, here are the pieces which you're going to need to build in freeform. You'll want to have some plates in various sizes. I'd recommend one by whatever plates and then two by whatever plates. These are going to be for the inner structure. You'll also need some headlight bricks, so one by one, one by two, and one by four headlight bricks, just in any sizes that you have. And then headlight plates as well. I definitely recommend having these. I'm not sure what they're called, but I'll be referring to them as headlight plates. And then you'll also want whatever color you're using to build in, so whatever color your terrain is, that color in the form of cheese slopes, regular slopes, plates, tiles, and roof pieces. Those are over here. So I would recommend building up an inner structure for the base of your freeform. There should be a cross in the middle that connects all of the sides to one another, and the edge of it should be jagged, and um, I'd say in a bit of an oval shape. It should have some kind of defined shape, so it's not just going everywhere, but it should definitely have a lot of weird edges and things that make it feel very organic. So I finished the base. As you can see, it's a bit of like a jagged shape. The edges are very uneven, and it doesn't really make some nice shape, as you might say. It definitely looks weird. Now what you're going to want to do is take your headlight bricks and just place them all around the sides like this, so that you can build off of those to make the terrain. Once you've added all of those on, you should begin taking the colors that you're using for the terrain, and building those off of them like this, so that they go downwards and not just up. I don't know if that made any sense, but I, what I was trying to say was that they shouldn't be like this, but they're gonna be on the sides now, so it kind of like arcs down and gives it a really cool shape. My plan is to make the build mainly green, with an even combination of sand green and regular green. There's also going to be a dark tan pathway cutting through the middle with a few spots of brown. Finally, I'm including some dark gray clumps of rock here and there. Thinking about the color sets you're going to use is actually pretty important, and by set I mean every shade of a certain color, so a set of gray would include every shade of gray. If you're thinking about making, say, jungle terrain, then you should definitely use lots of different shades of green, because that would make sense for the environment in which there are many types of plants. But if you're making a plain grassland, like I am, then I would definitely stick to only one or two shades of green, because that would look more natural with the type of environment. And this goes for any color, you should always think about what would look natural, one shade or many shades. For example, in this Star Wars mock, I only used one shade of tan for the sand, and this helps the studs, tiles, and cheese slopes contrast each other more. So what happens if you run into a section of the terrain where you want to have studs on the bottom but not the top? What you're going to want to do is take off the top part, and then take some of the headlight plates that I was talking about earlier, these guys, and then build them into the base like this. Now I definitely just recommend whenever you need to switch them out like this, just do it organically and not from the very beginning because you don't really know when you're going to need to implement these. So as you can see, in some parts I've just been taking off the headlight bricks altogether, which is something that you can totally do and I would definitely recommend doing because it's kind of cool. You've got the contrast between it coming up like this and then going down the side like this. So at the beginning, I would highly recommend placing down all of the headlight bricks, but then as you go along, you can definitely take them out and switch them out. I'm also going to start using these sand green headlight bricks as well, so that I can build them into the terrain. A really important tip is that when you're building up the sides of the freeform, to try and keep the edges as close together as possible. So as you can see, there is a bit of a curve right here. Nothing's too crazy. The largest gap is like right here. So make sure that it isn't just doing super, super jagged cuts, but it all fits together smoothly. So in parts of the inner structure, I've been switching out 
the inside colors with colors of the terrain so that I can kind of build inside and use the structure to my advantage. So while you're building, definitely keep in mind that the structure is not permanent and it will change over time. So right now I've got a good part of the freeform done. And when you're kind of at the stage where you want to begin building on the top area, what you need to do is take some bricks and layer them on top of here to fill in the gaps between the cross. So as you can see, this entire area, or most of it, has been filled in, and now you can begin layering on the top. So as I'm beginning to include the terrain on top, I'm also building in the rock clusters, and I'm also going to build in the path as well. So I've decided to include only one tree, and I'm also going to take a minifigure and put it here as well, just to add a little bit of interest. I found Aragorn. Anyways, that was my tutorial on how to build Freeform in LEGO. I hope that this was helpful to you in some way, but please remember that this is only my opinion and definitely not the only correct way to do this. I would highly recommend experimenting by yourself and looking at other LEGO mocks to learn more about Freeform. And I hope that seeing this build shows how much depth and detail this technique can add to your mocks. I'll also leave some links down below to some other amazing LEGO tutorial videos you should check out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.